slightly and give an overview of the generalized trauma of the body. The trauma management protocols are generally standard going to all traumatic patients. Generally, there is the first comprehensive assessment and the management of the trauma patient in the emergency situation. Best utilization of the time is the golden hours, which lies between the life and the death of a trauma event. Usually, ALS and trimodal death and these are the uh, few steps which are very important to remember. These are uh, within second to minutes, usually the death occurs by the brain injuries or the aortic ruptures. But within minutes to hours, uh, and there is uh, subdural hematoma and the rupture of the spleen and, and the liver. And uh, within days, uh, usually patient suffers from uh, sepsis. ALS protocol uh, to manage a uh, trauma patient is uh, that we first do the primary survey, then we uh, resuscitate the patients, and then we uh, do the secondary survey, that is uh, detailed evaluation of the patient. Then comes the uh, tertiary survey, that is the management, detailed management of the patient. The primary survey mainly comprises of survey and cervical spine immobilization, breathing uh, maintenance and the circulation and the control of the hemorrhage and disability assessment, that is neurological assessment, and then exposure and then environmental control. That is exposure, uh, uh, taking the patient out of the uh, injured area at the area where the injury had occurred, and then exposing the patient and tearing off and the clothes of the patients and then the control of the environment that is control of the hypothermia by covering the patient by some warm blanket. Then spinal spine mobilization is very, very important. Airway control uh, occurs uh, by chin lift and the jaw thrust. Usually airway is obstructed uh, by uh, some edema or the far body, or clotted blood, or some time aspiration of the vomitus. So the advanced method to control the airway and to maintain the airway is endotracheal intubation, immediate endotracheal intubation. And if it is not possible, then cricothyroidectomy. Cricothyroidectomy is the ideal way to maintain the airway. Here we uh, cricothyroid mem membrane punctures and directly enter into the trachea and maintain the airway. Then the prevention of the cervical spine injury. We immobilize it and prevent the hyper extension of the neck by applying the neck collar. Breathing and the ventilation control. Air tendency does not adi uh, ensures adequate ventilation. Look for the bilateral air entry. Provide the oxygen uh, to inhale for the patients and uh, see any chest wall movement and chest wall injury, lung injury, and the diaphragm inspection, palpation, and percussion, uh, and the auscultation of the chest. Circulation and the hemorrhage control. Usually, uh, signs of uh, shock are seen if uh, there is uh, change in the skin color and narrow pulse, hypotension. Uh, tachycardia, and there is the diminished level of the consciousness, degrees, you know, good. so all these are the signs of shock. So control the hemorrhage. If there is bleeding already there, then that must be stopped by pressure and then the replacement by fluid or by blood. So neurological assessment is also very, very important. Important, also common scale is very important. Uh, to evaluate the neurological environment. Exposure and environmental control. Undress the patient completely and then prevent the hypothermia. 
by warm blooded IR and by getting the warm fluid. Early hemorrhage control is very important. And we come to the secondary surgery. After initial management, control of the airway, maintenance of the uh, circulation, preventing the ha hemorrhage, and taking the patient from the inflicting area, then the secondary survey is done. Secondary survey, there is a complete history taken, head to toe examinations, and assessment of the vital signs, complete neurological examination uh, is done. And if uh, some investigation is required, then that is done, that is ordered into that investigation. Now we are uh, coming to our specific topic, that is in the facial trauma. In any injury, in any trauma to the body, face is the most vulnerable area. It gets inflected. It uh, occurs in the roadside accidents and most commonly in automobile accidents or by some assaults or some by sports injuries or some by layer activities. Face injury may, uh, may occur. So the face according to the injury, as it is the most uh, prominent area, is divided into three parts. Upper third, middle third, and the lower third. Upper third is the area above the supraorbital ditch. And the middle area, that is the most important area in where the injury occurs, that is the area between supraorbital ridge to the upper irregulars. And the third area, that is the lower area, is involving the alveolus and the mandible area. So, uh, whenever there is facial trauma, before discussing the detail of the facial trauma, detail of the injury in these area, I would like to uh, give a general management, a general management of the yeah. Generally, usually there are some general management that is the airway management as I have already mentioned, control of the hemorrhage, that is if there is some uh, bleeding vessels, then some bleeding vessels and uh, controlling uh, the hemorrhage from that bleeding vessels and then replacing the fluids and then seeing the associated injury, that the injury of the soft tissue, injury to the bloated diet and injury to the patient nerves. So all uh, must be considered. So the facial injury is divided into three parts, as I have already mentioned. It is the injury of the face, uh, the upper part, that is the most uh, upper uh, one third. It involves the frontal sinus, supraorbital ridge, and the frontal bone. And the middle third, that I already mentioned, is the most important area. Uh, regarding the injury of the face and most commonly involved area. Here, the nasal bones and the septal fractures occurs, nasal orbital area uh, fractures occurs, there occurs uh, in the fractures of the zygoma, fracture of the zygomatic arch, orbital floor fractures, and then the fracture of the maxilla. And fracture of the maxilla are uh, very important. These fractures are divided into uh, three parts. These are the three types of fractures in the mozilla. These are the leaf for one, leaf for two, and leaf for three fractures. Leaf for one fractures are the transfer fractures, and leaf for two are the pyramidal fractures, and, and leaf for three are craniofacial disjunctions. That is, there is a separation of the cranium from the face. There is a gap there. And the third area, that is the lower third area, here, there is the injury to the alveolar process, injury to the senses, injury to the body of the mandible, angle of the mandible, ascending ramus of the mandible, condylar process of the mandible, and the condylar process as well as to the coronoid process of the mandible, and then there is the intermediate mandible charge. So we will discuss uh, one by one all these injuries, uh, not in so much detail, but uh, uh, a slight, uh, I have to give the overview to you people. Uh, first of all, the upper third. 
Okay. And I, I already mentioned the anterior valve defects. Usually here, and there is a soft tissue injury or injury to the bone. Usually uh, there is laceration or sometimes step deformity there. Treatment is usually the conservative, that is uh, clean the injured area, uh, make it debris free, a margin of uh, the wound are uh, cleared and trimmed, then proximated and sutured. But sometimes there is a fracture to the anterior wall of the frontal sinus, that is anterior table fracture. In that case, there occurs the deformity, that is the depression occurs. So we have to raise that uh, to prevent uh, the cosmetic deformity. And the CN in this area for the management of this fracture is very important. It must be given in the pro, eyebrow, inside the eyebrow, because the hair comes over that and that is uh, become scarless area. And uh, when the CN in the brow is given, eyebrow, and then the fractured uh, segment is raised by an elevator. And one thing, uh, one precaution must be observed that the fractured segment should not separate from the periosteum. Otherwise, in that uh, separate bone segment, we will act as a question and ultimately you will, have, you will leave a big scar and big deformity. And uh, then there is uh, the fracture to the uh, posterior table, that is the posterior wall of the frontal sinus, and that is a uh, very uh, serious injury. It may rupture the dura, uh, it may uh, give injury to the uh, brain, and there may occur the leakage of the uh, CSR. So, if there is any leakage, that water leakage uh, from there, we have may confirm it um, by an handkerchief signs or by uh, examining and the secretions by beta transfer examination and then the repair uh, of the posterior table or repair of the tubular and the posterior table by a uh, bone cement. But here we have to involve the neurosurgeons. So there may be some injury to the nasofrontal duct. That is the nasofrontal duct which opens in the middle meters uh, at the frontal nasal recess. If and this nasofrontal duct get injured, the secretion may get collected in the frontal sinus, leading to a mucosal formation. So it is very, very important uh, to consider the nasofrontal duct, uh, its injury, and repair of it. There should be a wide company communications between the frontal sinus and the nose, so that all the secretion in the frontal sinus is drained. But if the sinus is small one, mucosa should be coated and that must be ablated uh, by a fat. By a fat and that uh, ablated the sinus and there is no condition of the secretion uh, by ablation of the mucosa uh, by coatization of the mucosa. Uh, so nasofrontal duct injury is managing this very uh, well. Fracture of the middle third of the uh, face. As I mentioned, these factors are uh, very important. Injury of uh, in, in this area, uh, here uh, there is the fracture of nose and the septum is the most important one. Fracture of the nose and the septum occurs uh, by either a uh, frontal blow or by a uh, lateral blow. So this type of blow, when a road accident or by some assault, uh, or by some fight or some uh, sports injury. This type of uh, injury gives two types of deformities. Either it causes the depression of the bridge of the nose, or it causes the um, deviated from deviation of the nose. So the depression of the nose occurs, depressive deformities occurs and due to the frontal blow, frontal blow over the bridge of the nose and bridge of nose is shattered down, septum is injured at its multiple points. First, the cartilage is one separated, and then the bony that is the perpendicular plate of its mice also get injured. And there is the depression of the um, bridge of um, the nose, and there is a slight rotation of the nasal tip. And it gave a moderate deformity of the 
big nose deformity. Why I mentioned the moderate deformity? Because uh, the complete um, big nose deformity is given by a, a nasal orbital fractures, nasal orbital fractures. And second one is the lateral blow, that is the deviation C deformity of the bridge of the nose. It is uh, the uh, blow or the injury or the force acting on the lateral wall of the nose. It injured the lateral nasal bone, injured the septums, uh, to some extent, the other side of the nasal bones. And it uh, caused the C-shaped deformity, nose become tilted and gave an ugly look. So whenever there is uh, depression of the nose, there may be some edema, there may be some hemorrhage at the epistaxis, there may be some bruise or something, open fractures and the depressed nose and deformity. And the best time to manage this and deformity is before the occurrence of, before the appearance of the edema, that is within one hour. Or after seven days, when the edema settled down. So in between that area, it is not a good time uh, to deal the fracture and to manage the fracture of the uh, nose and the septum. Fracture of the nose is uh, usually done by manipulation, endocration, or sometimes by disinfection uh, of the depressed segment by ashes forces, and then correction or straightening uh, of the deviated segment by the Valsham forceps, then applying a splint over that. And nasal packing is done so that and the corrected segment remain at its place. And uh, sometimes when there is uh, the multiple commutated injuries and multiple fractures of the nasal bones, we have to use the wire uh, passing through all these uh, fracture segment and uh, correcting it and uh, leaving it for at least uh, two to four weeks there. Blessed chief uh, fractures, uh, uh, as I mentioned, it is from the lateral group. Um, we may apply uh, uh, simple uh, techniques uh, to correct it. Most of the time, it is corrected by simple techniques, uh, by Russian uh, forces or by ashes forces. Um, but sometimes we have to use the plate. We have to use the plates or we have to use the wire to unite all the all uh, the shattered segment and then apply the POP uh, in the splint over here. Now, uh, the nasal orbital uh, orbital ethmoidal fractures. It is very important. Here, uh, there is a collapse of the ethmoid bone that also uh, leads to the orbital fractures. It also tears uh, the medial canthus ligament. So, all the this nasal orbital area is left and, uh, and there is a depression at the base of the nose, at the nasions, and nasal tips rotated upward. And it gives a typical pig-like nose, pig-like nose deformity. And, and there is the telecant, so distance uh, between the uh, ethmoids, between the bridge of the center of the nose and uh, the medial canthus increases and we call it the uh, telecanthus. This uh, fracture is a very severe fracture. It occurs in the in this area and uh, it may uh, cause uh, the injury to the uh, frontal sinus, it may cause the injury to the increased complaint, may cause the leakage of the CSF and uh, and uh, CSF uh, leak there, and uh, the patient feels uh, headache, and sometimes the sending chance of the sending new letters are also there. Whenever uh, there is uh, in this type of records, it is uh, really managed by uh, open techniques, not by uh, closed techniques. I will uh, come to the open techniques and the closed techniques. Uh, in the next segment, we will discuss uh, the management as a whole. But uh, uh, up to here, 
uh, we have to uh, see the uh, patient by history, uh, how it occurs, when it occurs, what was the question of the patients. And then we have to examine the patient, uh, where, on which side the division is there, whether the depression is there or not. Is there any step deformity? Uh, mobility of the uh, fracture segment is there or not? Is there any correctness? Is there any tenderness? Generalized swelling and specific bruising, that's sometimes bruising in the infrared abdominal area occurs. So we have to see the bruising is in the infrared area or uh, it is the circumferentially, it is the circumference that indicates uh, to other and other fractures. So septum is very important. It ha must have to see because whenever there is a fracture of the septum, the chance of the septal hematoma formation increases very much. Or it may get rupture or get, get perforated. And uh, insomnia may occur. Nosmia may occur. Due to the reason that uh, the olfactory area, that is at the posterior superior part of the septum, may get uh, trauma or it is obstructed by the edema or a clotted blood. And the previous from that may get injured. And you may face the leaking of the uh, CSF from there. Visual equity is also checked because middle and cancel ligament is disturbed. Sometimes the treatment of the inferior uh, rectus also occurs that uh, leads to a diplopia. And the bite of the patient also disturbs due to the cephalic uh, irritation. The anterior open bite deformity may occur. These uh, fractures we have to evaluate not only by a history and the clinical examination, but also we have to um, do the radiology, especially the X-ray. What will view right and left one or the glucose view are very very important. What will we give the important uh, information? But nowadays CT scans, the CT scan give a proper uh, alignment, a uh, proper line of the fractures and the area involved and the extent of the disease, extent of the branches. And beta 2 transfer in suspe suspected case of uh, CSL leak is very important because it is the specific for the specific for the CSL leak. Because in normal secretion contains beta 1 and uh, CSF contains beta 2 transfer. Now the management of now the management of the this one, uh, this nasal fractures and the septal fractures, although I has uh, mentioned uh, along with the discussion of the features and the mode of injuries and uh, the line of fractures, but as a whole, these are managed by a two way, by a closed reduction technique or by a open reduction techniques. Closed reduction techniques is the way uh, I, Ashes forceps and calcium forceps mobilization, then uh, alignment by your digital pressures. And the open reduction technique is the septorhinoplasty. Septum is corrected by your septoplasty, and if there is some deformity, if there is some depression, that may be averted. Uh, or if uh, there is uh, some uh, defect at the base, bony graft may be placed this thing. Now the fractures of the orbit. In the middle of third of the face, orbital fractures are also important. We usually call it the blowout fractures because there is it is a misnomer. Actually, we should call it blowout fracture. We call it a blowout fracture. That is blow from the external surface, and the fracture occurred at the floor of the orbit, and. Uh, infraorbital rim, infraorbital margin, and uh, inferior orbital foramen also fractured, and the muscle get entrapped in these fractures. And sometimes, and there occurs and uh, uh, there are the uh, tear draft deformity. That is the content of the orbit collapse in the entrum, collapse in the entrum, and the eyeballs sink in. There is occur in mass. 
and there is the decreased movement. There is the decreased movement of the thermoplasia things. So uh, uh, whenever uh, this uh, fracture occurs, um, there is a degree of uh, really there is a correct ecchymosis in the pancreata uh, uh, in the lid, and then the forward orbital area there is the thermoplasia, and uh, there is uh, the diplopia. Uh, on radiology, and there is the tear to fall, tear drop to fall with the, that is the dropping of the orbital contents into the auxiliary entry. So, really, we uh, do the investigation with the X ray water view and the CT scans, CT scan of the face. These are the gold standard investigations and uh, give a lot of information, and it is very important to manage uh, to do these investigations before the movement. So the management of the orbital uh, fracture is the is of two types. It's by two groups. That is the infraorbital approach. We approach uh, the orbit by infraorbital CS. And uh, then uh, we reduce uh, the, uh, the contents dropping into the auxiliary entrance, or there is some entrapment that entrapment is uh, uh, dislocated. And the second technique is the trans, uh, trans entrant. So by a sublabial approach, we are by a uh, nasal approach, we approach the entrant and we raise the, we, uh, raise the dropped segment or uh, uh, release in the trapped tissue by a finger uh, by raising in the fractured element by a finger and packing the auxiliary entrant uh, with the back. With a special pack, uh, that's big pack, this would have some paraffin case pack that we uh, maintain uh, for a long year uh, without any infections or with any sepsis. And uh, when uh, you feel that in the deformity has settled down and uh, edema has settled down and there is no deformity, that pack can be removed. That can be removed by a sublevian CM that uh, left open or can be uh, removed through the nose uh, by a uh, inferior um, and trust me approach. So the middle third of the face uh, also uh, contains a very specific type of fracture. These are the leaf force fracture. These are the fracture of the mozilla. Mozilla contains three types of fractures. These are leaf foot one fractures, leaf foot two fractures, and leaf foot three, fr three fractures. And uh, it occurs due to the direct blow uh, striking to a hard object of uh, falling over a uh, over an object and it have a maximum uh, impact over the uh, mid face that over the axilla. Uh, Leaf out one fracture. It is uh, considered as a transfer fractures. It runs parallel to the palate. It crosses the lower part of the nasal septum lower part of the maxillary antrum and the, and the inferior part of the cardiac plate. And this uh, is mentioned here in the uh, line, that is in my uh, green line. And the second fracture is a leaf or two fractures. It is also named as the pyramidal fractures. It is shown here uh, by, uh, by a blue line. And these fractures runs through the Mosaic sinus, that is the floor of the mosaic sinus, and then to the inferior orbital margin. It also involves the, it also runs uh, through zygomatic uh, mosaic sutures, floor of the orbit, and the lacrimal bone to the nasios, that is the root of the nose. Then there is the leaf for three fracture, it is most serious fracture. Here there is the craniofacial distinctions. It runs through the nasio. And then the ethmoidofrontal junctions, superior and fissure, fissure, uh, lateral wall of the orbit, frontal zygomatic, and the frontal uh, and temporal zygomatic sutures, and the upper part of the pterygoid bullet. And uh, sign and symptoms uh, of this fracture is there is the epistaxis, there is a circumorbital ecchymosis, that is, orbit, this show of the ecchymosis through. Through or the circumference of the orbit. And there is the eye that is tilted up, ponda eye, black eye. Facial demarkers, surgical emphysema occurs because there is the 
fracture to the auxiliary sinus. Lengthening of the face, because there is the cranial facial dissolution, there is the lengthening of the face. Infraorbital nerve may get injured, and there may occur the entrapment of the uh, infraorbital nerve in it. And so uh, there is an anesthesia over the anterior part of the face, anterior over the mozilla, and uh, that is easily accessible. Anterior open part, teeth cannot be occluded properly, and there is the bruising and digestion of the heart and soft palate. If we open the mouth and see that there is bruising at that area, that also shows that some auxiliary fracture has been occurred. So this fracture is best assessed by CT scans, CT scan penis and the CT scan brain. But uh, in some old uh, time, or even though uh, X-ray, water view, posterior, and posterior uh, interior, and the lateral view are uh, good to assess uh, the for fractures as well. So, uh, by this way, the injury uh, to the airway and there may occur the airway compromise due to the edema and due to the uh, blood, due to the cluttered blood, due to the spirit, or due to the fall cord. So, average from the auxiliary artery may occur. If it is uh, from the auxiliary artery, there will be a fuse hemorrhage. The auxiliary artery bleeds very much. And, uh, and we have to control it at the spot. We have to remove uh, the uh, debris or the foreign particles, not the blood, or the mucus from the earth. Then we have to fix it. Fixation of this area, fractures, that is the relief of fractures, is by interdental fixations. Interdental wiring, uh, fixation by interdental wiring. And then there may uh, we may fix it uh, by intermediary wiring using the arc bar. Sometimes the partial arc bar or sometimes the complete arc bar is used to keep the uh, fractured line, fractured uh, segment in place. And the open reduction and internal fixation uh, by plates uh, of uh, different uh, sides, different holes, we use it wires and uh, then slings uh, with the zygobulma or the infarcted rings. So, the Second fractures of uh, in this area uh, of uh, the mozilla is the zygoma. Second most common fracture after the nasal hemoma. It uh, occurs, uh, fra fracture occurs at three um, part. That's why it is named as the tripod fractures. That is uh, the zygomatic frontal, zygomatic temporal, and the infraorbital ribs. Uh, these uh, points may get injured uh, in zygoma fractures. It occurs uh, due to the direct blow over there. And the zygoma is rotated posteriorly and medially. So, in this, there is a flattening of the face. That is, the manual prominence goes away. And there is the step deformity in the infrared region. So, there is the restricted movement of uh, the upper bath. And due to the entrapment, the eyeball is restricted over and due to the entrapment of the some muscles there. In the periorbital uh, emphysema or the chemosis occurs, subunia and the entrapment hemorrhage occurs, and the uh, sensations will become out of the of the cheek occur due to the infrarbital nerve environment. So, this is the uh, picture how and the facial trauma occurs, how the leaf foot fractures occurs. How the eye looks like in the panda eye and uh, intubation has been done in these patients to maintain the airway. So, these fractures, uh, after the uh, zygoma fracture, there occurs the arch of the zygoma, zygomatic arch fracture. It occurs at three parts, anterior part middle part and later part. It occurs the, due to the lateral blue, due to the lateral blue, impact is from the lateral sides. So temporal area goes inside. So in this area, it may involve the lateral part of the orbit, or it may involve the frontal bone as well. 
So this area uh, may show the ecosis, bruises, and the flattening of this area or the depression of the uh, zygomatic arch. So this area is best assessed by CT scans to see the number of fractured things and the line of fractured things. Whenever uh, we have assessed that, we have to disimpact and elevate that by seeing inside the hairlines or it is the close rotation, but by open rotation, we may open it uh, and may apply a place there by players having some mini holes and fixation it. Now the fractures of lower third of the face. Lower third of the face comprises of the mandible and the alveolus. Mandible, the coronoid process of the mandibles is the most common uh, to get fractured. Then there comes the, uh, the angle of mandibles, then symphysis, then the ramus, then the body uh, of the uh, uh, mandible can get fractures. These mandible fractures may occur directly below uh, to the mandible or to the indirect blow. Indirect blow is that blow to the chin and that indirectly uh, damage the coronoid process. And it is uh, it comes in the uh, temporal mandible joints. Okay. The final symptom of uh, this picture is step of vanity, asymmetry of the lower dental arch, ecchymosis of the oromocosa, and the tendon of the side. And there is there may be some characters. Patient feel pain, stress, that is difficult in opening the mouth, and, and then the division of the, to the injured side while the patient opens the mouth. X-ray PAV of the skull is very important to assess these, that these fractures. CT scan also assess the fracture line, the fracture part, and the fractured segment. And OPG is also very important. Arthropentanograms give a good clue whether the root, that the dental roots are involved or not, and how much uh, dental involvement is there. So we approach these fractures by two approaches by the closed direction or by open direction. Closed directions we manage and uh, Lower third of face uh, fracture by interdental wiring and intermediate fixation. Intact uh, dental arch and uh, dental arch bars um, we may use or uh, incomplete dental arch bar we, we may use depending on the extent of uh, the dental injury along with the medicals. And the external fixation is uh, done when there is uh, uh, it is not possible that we uh, reduce and the fractures of the mandible are uh, there is chances of remaining some malocclusions. So occlusion of the teeth is very important for, for function point of view. Otherwise, if uh, malocclusion occurs, uh, how um, beautifully you have uh, managed the fractures, all is all is in in vain. So we have to make it sure that the proper occlusion of the teeth is there. So if uh, occlusion of the teeth by open reduction, uh, by closed reduction is not possible, then we have to do the open reductions and the internal physician. We may approach by a inter-oral approach or by an extra-oral approach. We extra-oral approach and the internal approach, both are uh, good approaches. We have to make the uh, mandible uh, immobilize for uh, three weeks by applying the, the plates or interosseous products. At three weeks, we may remove the uh, viral and um, we have to assess the occlusion of the teeth as well. So, this, when this injury occurs, uh, fractures of the upper third, middle third, and the lower third of the face occurs. Especially the injuries of the middle or third of the face 
we have to initially assess the airway, breathing, circulation. We have to see some uh, neurological disability. Then the exposure of the patient is very important. In detail survey, in secondary survey, the detail survey is done where we fall, we do the ENT and the head and exit. It comes in the secondary survey. We have to see it completely. We have to examine the patient from head to toe. Then the dental examination is also very important. Eye examination is important. Facial laceration letter, injury to the lip, eyebrow, end of the nose, ear, eyelid, rotor duct, and the protoglyphic duct. Facial nerve injury is also started out. So we have to we also give the antibiotic cover, we have to give the tetanus covers, then we have to uh, follow up the patients by uh, CT scan or by doing the radio plus. It was all about the injuries of the face. I think uh, you have an idea, a brief idea, how the uh, injuries of the face occurs, what are in the area bars, which area contains which fractures, and how to manage it. Thank you very much. Okay, sir. After all, we can. Yeah, I'll